showtime. Uh, well, my brother is usually right on time, but he's nowhere to be found, missing in action, so it looks like it's just me and you. Don't suppose you could help out? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Would any of your family members mind being honorary morticias or morticians today? How about any of you? Anybody? No? It's comfy. It's cozy here at my funeral home sweet home. My dad thought it'd be the ideal place to raise a family. He prepared my brother and I back when we were just little Oshkosh bagashes. <laughs> you know, it wasn't long after our first A's in finger painting did he show us our first dead body. He just finished embalming and restoring some old man who had died at the beach. How'd he die? Just minding his own business when a stiff wind blew a big umbrella out of the sand and <laughs> impaled him right in the chest. <laughs> I couldn't wait to see it. <laughs> when Dad opened the doors to the preparation room, well, I was like, that was like Charlie with Willy Wonka first showed him the chocolate. <laughs> he handed me a pair of embalmer's gloves so I could touch the body. It was like passing the Olympic torch. <laughs> Now, uh, what we like to do is make the process as least depressing as possible. <laughs> Especially when you're here day in and day out, you, you have to find the joy. <laughs> My brother has seen a few Broadway shows, and he said it's not unlike what we do here. <laughs> Each time we do this, we have a new show with a new character. We have the set, the lights, the music. Fed for that moment when, when Dad would get a beep on his pager, and he'd look at us and say, showtime. Showviewing, <laughs> it was thrilling. Uh, especially when I was a kid. It was like waking up early on Christmas morning and seeing that beautifully decorated pine tree. But in this case, it was a pine box. <laughs> Dad created these hand signals in case someone began to cry so loud it started to upset everyone. Uh, we gave the appropriate signal. We got a crier. <laughs> Whomever can get there first would would be on them like a, you know, like a ball boy at Wimbledon ready to shuffle the person away to six. <laughs> we work so fast, we're like magic. We also get, we also get what we call the, the Sultan Fuss, or Casket Climber. <laughs> those are for those moments, like in My Girl, when Beta attacks Tommy's face basket. You know, after this clip by bees, you know. And she's moaning and wailing on him, but, go oh, his glasses. He can't go anywhere without his glasses. Oh my gosh, glasses. Oh, you know, it's, it's super dramatic. You know, it's like Gary, there's soil and green in his people. <laughs> it can really upset the fan. <laughs> so, start off with which coffin to choose. To pick the right brand of uh, pine pajamas to wear for the eternal nap. With the big casket book. We have the original, but not to be outdone, wood finished casket with crepe interior. Here, you go with the steel shell with velvet inside. Okay. It's not very often around these parts, but every now and then, someone will want this. The dark. <laughs> it's my titanium series. Set interior, stainless steel locking mechanism. Yeah, you're, you're looking at the Rolls Royce of caskets. This, this is decaying in style. Control car. It pierces through organs and sucks out unneeded fluid. Nothing to be scared about. Not scary like when you first start driving the bodies back here from the hospital and the dead wagons. They tend to gurgle and moan back there. Sounds kind of like uh, Sideshow Bob, you know, like. We <laughs> like it might have taken someone who was still alive. But funny enough, that's step one in the embalming process. Before anything else, you make sure they're dead. <laughs> Even though you're doing surgical procedures on the dead, things can still go wrong. I guess the 
I guess the pro is it's not like you could lose a patient at the table. I mean, <laughs> what's the I mean, what's the worst that could happen, right? If you did you did everything wrong, well, maybe you get a heartbeat. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no, they'd still be dead. <laughs> Although one of the few cons to this job is the smell and not just the decomposing. A few weeks ago we had this really, really big guy and my father and brother and I were moving him onto the table and we mistakenly moved him onto his stomach which had a lot of gas in it. Well, the pressure was so great that this geyser of poop shot out of him like a cannon. <laughs> it went everywhere. I mean, I know, he sprayed the ceiling so bad it looked like uh, like a Jackson Pollock painting. It was <laughs> it's good to have a recent photo of the person so you make them up as accurately as possible. It's, it's hard sometimes because some people bring in uh, high school yearbook pictures of people <laughs> who are 80 years old. I mean, I mean come on, I'm, a, I'm an artist, not Ponce de Leon, right, George? <laughs> yep. All right, now, I've already set George's features. This is making sure his eyes and mouth are shut and remain closed, so not to scare the crap out of his entire family. <laughs> I've seen this happen at other funerals. It's not a moment you want in the photo album. It's also good to find out from the family Anything special to put near or in the casket for decoration? Some of the things people put in the casket can they can be very sweet. Some are just odd. <laughs> we buried people with their favorite golf club, hockey stick, DVDs, train sets. We even buried this one guy with his lawnmower blades. <laughs> and I'm not here to judge. <laughs> You better be calling me because you're on your way. Fine. Oh, okay, go. Oh, you're sorry. Okay. Yeah, no, well, that's good. Yeah, no, wait, whoa. Oh, I think I think Dad overheard your sympathy. Yeah. Oh my god, it's a miracle. Yeah, he just jumped off the table. Oh, he, he's doing river dance. He's so happy. Go. Oh, yeah. Oh, I wish you could see it. Yeah, I gotta go. <laughs> you know, um, I looked at your will. Kind of surprised me there. It said he wanted to be cremated. Then I saw why. Dad was a big Mickey Mail fan, and uh, it says he wants me to take his remains to Yankee Stadium and spread his ashes over home plate. Found out you can't do that, so. Without <laughs> the uh, express written consent of Major League Baseball, Dad, I don't know what the hell I'm going to do. <laughs> Let me just say the next time, God forbid, you need to contact the likes of us, just know that we really do have your loved one's interests in mind. This is the legacy my dad left, and I'm prepared to live up to it. See, most people on the worst days of their life have seen more people cry in one month than most people do in a lifetime. But Dad made sure we were their shoulder. That's our job. The person they can count on. And when something like this pushes their life back or to the side, you can grab a hold, point them forward, and give them a little push. Dad instilled that we can use our gifts to help people mourn their loved ones, but I know my dad lived his life to serve his family and countless others. And even now that he's free of that, I'm sure he's finding a way to breathe life into death as well, because that's the man he was. And the spirit that lives on. Oh, ready, George? Showtime.